Hey guys, this is the build review for the Tower Hobbies Ryan STA. This is an interesting airplane. I've got a lot to cover, so stay tuned, and right after the break, we'll just get right to it. All right, guys, this is the, as I mentioned in the opening, this is the Tower Hobbies copy of the Ryan STA. It's a, it's a very, very cool looking airplane. It's, it's unusual uh, from any other plane that I have in, in that they focused very heavily on aesthetics. Now, most other planes are modeled after something, you know, they, they're, they're trying to pursue or, or be designed. The design is based on something that's in production and, and that's live out, out there. The uh, Ryan STA is no, no different. But the thing about this plane is that there's a certain class, and it reminds me a little bit of the Spacewalker. It reminds me a little bit of the Super Sportster. There's just a certain styling. They call it the Golden Era, and this plane definitely fits in that mold because they focus very heavily on aesthetics and it kind of reminds me of those old cars from the 30s with the engine and the side pipes hanging out there and the great big swoopy fenders they 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 kind of they kind of included elements uh design elements on this plane that are just reminiscent of that period so i'll cover those details as i get into the build review but I want to cover some critical specs first. First off, this is a 40 inch long plane, so front to back, 40 inches. It's a 53 inch wingspan, and it doesn't really, it doesn't present like that to me. I have, I mean, like my Mustang that I just built is a 55 inch wingspan, and that plane looks twice the size of this thing. So there's a lot of wing area for the size of the plane, I guess is what I'm getting at. Although there's not a really thick uh, cord, not a real, not a real long uh, cord. It's, it's, uh, one hand length so uh it's about four pounds uh fully loaded with the battery motor electrics and they asked for the cg to be somewhere between 60 and 67 millimeters i when the books do that i generally split the difference and i parked mine right at 63 63 or 64 and um i'm using i, I use book rates uh I, i've in my experience if you start out with book rates you'll be okay to fly and then from there you can tweak it so regarding the build, there I'll cover certain points that I really want to highlight. One of them is this cowl fastening mechanism is really cool because normally with a cowl, you have to position it and tape it and use markers and find the, the points where you drill in the side and it's got to be balanced left to right. And you got to get the, the spinner centered on the thing. And, and it's a thing, right? It's an event. This, pow this cowl is keyed. So you basically snap it in and you're done <laughs> and there's no screws holding it in, which is fine. It seems to be, it seems to be fine. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but it's got to be one of the easiest cowls I've ever put together. Uh, very cool cowl system. And as I mentioned in the, in the unbox video, there were no issues with the paint and the finish on this cowl. All right, the next thing to talk about is the covering. And like I mentioned in the unbox, the covering on this plane is excellent. I am really impressed with what Tower does in a prefab kit. Again, I haven't touched this with an iron. And you normally, I, I mean, I've kind of, I've given Tower a hard way to go in some of the reviews, especially great planes. I know those were Hobbyco brands, but they're all the same company and they probably buy from the same place. So I've given Hobbyco or Great Planes kind of a hard way to go. I'm not sure where Tower is getting or who's making this airplane. It's branded as Tower Hobbies. It's not branded as Hobbyco or Great Planes. So we'll call it a Tower plane. But wherever they're going, their covering is superb. It's just top shelf covering. And then regarding fit and finish, you'll remember I pointed out in the Mustang, which is a Phoenix bird, some of the gap issues that I saw. And look at this. I mean, that is... There's a very slight gap right there, but other than that, it's a very nice, clean line all the way down the side of that plane. So their fit and finish on this plane, top marks. Uh, the empennage, normally you have to, you do some measurements and you, sometimes you got to file and sand and move things around, but this one is a keyed system. So the vertical stabilizer keys into the horizontal stabilizer. I didn't have to touch a thing. The dimension from the tip of the stabilizer to the tip of each wing 
was within an eighth of an inch box stock. All I had to do was just get a little tug on one end and it was ready to glue up. So real, real nice from that point of view. Okay, I wanna show you, uh, before I flip it over, I wanna show you a couple things to keep in mind if you decide to get this plane. One of them is there's a lot of glued on parts and I just, I'm terrible. I don't know what it is with me and canopies. I just can't seem to get them right. But anyway, a lot of glued on parts. So if you do elect to get this plane, make sure you have some good canopy glue. They suggest that you can use CA or canopy glue and I would just make an absolute train wreck out of it if I use CA. Uh, can canopy glue is the only thing that saves my bacon on this at all. So I'm going to flip the plane over, get the stand out, flip the plane over, and I want to show you some stuff on the bottom. Okay, here we are. And th there are two, two main things I wanted to show you on the bottom of the plane. The first one is landing gear detail. There's an upper pant, a lower pant, and this lower pant is all connected, and of course the wheel. And it's just such a, it looks kind of complicated, but honestly, it's really easy to do. Just take your time. One thing to focus on is in the book, they say to trim this upper pant so it fits around the screw. You really do want to do that. Don't skip that skip, but use a Dremel. Don't try and cut it. This is hard fiberglass, and if you try and cut it, it's going to look like a hack job. I used a very small barrel uh, sander on my Dremel. I just popped it in there and lined it and then hit it for a couple seconds with my sander, and I got a nice, perfect little arch. It looks like it was designed that way. I'll give you one other little tip. When you have to drill, don't try and screw through here. you got to drill the hole. But what you do is take this upper pant and pull it forward and drill from this end. That way you're not fighting with this because this doesn't move. Um, and it's on there when you're, when you're supposed to be making these cuts. Alternatively, take a look at mine and drill your holes before you ever even put it on the plane. And you can get away with that because there aren't... There, I'll just show you. Just right in the center of these two triangle shapes just right in, right in the dead center and you'll be in the right spot to screw these in all right mine's made this one's a little forward i guess but anyway if you screw in while or you drill it while it's on the plane come at it from this side and you don't have to contend with the nose of the wheel pants same thing with this one you know it's, it's in that spot right in the middle of the triangle and same thing back here right in the middle of that triangle and then same thing over here dremel don't try and cut it with a knife just get a Dremel out and just buzz that real quick. And this is the spot I'm talking about right there on the on the upper pant. You have to do that. Okay. Um, here's another one of those plastic pieces that requires uh, canopy glue. So you do not want to, again, I would not try this with CA. I would have made an absolute mess out of it. Canopy glue still made a mess, but you can rub it off. So a little bit of Goo Goo on, paper towel, a little bit of time. Watch a couple YouTube videos while you work on it, and you can get that cleaned right up. So that came out real nice. The I do have a complaint though, and it has to do with the screw holes. The holes in the in the wing itself were in the correct spot to get the wing affixed to the to the fuselage, no problem. But the holes on this plastic piece, they weren't right. So again, Dremel to the rescue. Uh, I just took my Dremel and and moved, expanded the hole a little bit so I could get the screws in and out. Originally, I was just going to use this to capture the screws. It didn't work out, so just be aware. You might need a Dremel to, to open these holes up a little bit. In my case, I definitely did. Um, one last little thing I'm going to warn you about. Okay, so you see these, and I'll show you the mistake on the other side in a minute. But you see these control horns? They do not use the top plate. So the plate that goes on this side, they don't use them. Even though when they give you the control horns, the, the top plate is attached. So, you know, I've built so many planes that I, I hardly ever look at the directions anymore, and that got me this time, because when I was setting up my control horn, I drilled straight through, and then realized they didn't give me the screws to use the top plate. And I thought, well, now I got a hole, I got to put a top plate in, and I tried attaching a top plate, that made it even worse, because there was no support up top for it. So... Word, word of warning, use the screws that they give you and don't drill all the way through. In fact, just start the hole with a very small bit. Give yourself a pilot, screw it in, screw this side in, unscrew them both, put some CA in there, thin CA, give it a spritz of uh, accelerator, and then put the screws back in. Don't drill all the way through, and I'll show you what happens when you drill all the way through. Uh, other than that, here's another example of aesthetics. Look at the tail wheel. I mean, this is one of those key, key deals where it goes in, there's a hard plastic piece that keys into the fuselage, 
and then this one goes into the into the rudder and it's just clean super super clean they do use torque rods on this design i'm not a fan of that i i'd really rather use like phoenix does with the domino and use two elevator controls and two push rods and affix them inside the airplane i hate those things um i just don't like them <laughs> so it, it is what it is in this case and i probably could have converted it but I just went with what, what they what they gave in the kit. I, I, I'm not a fan though. I don't like torque rods. I'd rather have I'd rather have uh, just dual linkages. Alright, so that's the belly. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and we'll get this video wrapped up. Alright, back up top, I got a few more things to share with you and then I'll close the video out. First thing, uh, the firewall holes. I this is another one where I used a G-Force G32 from Value Hobby and of course, the firewall holes weren't lining up correctly. They're drilled out for the rim fire arrangement. And, you know, no standardization in brushless motors, so you have to do surgery to fix that. Again, I wish they would just leave the holes in the firewall alone and let us drill our own. It would just be so much easier when we're not using tower spec gear. On the spinner... If you've been watching my channel, you know I hate I hate the plastic spinners. So I got the Dubro with the aluminum backplate. These are really nice. They're they're very they stay very balanced. Uh, I love them. So you don't really fight with these to to maintain the balance. One other thing I'll point out on the line of aesthetics is notice on the on the hatch up front there's no release. <laughs> there's so that, again an unusual focus on aesthetics between the gear, the plastic bits. Uh, the neatness of the empennage assembly and now even the hatch. So let me pop the hatch off and show you my power arrangement or my electronics arrangement inside. There's my Turnigy 2200 4 cell that I'll be using and I use this for balance. I've got my marker lines in there to show where the balance is. My receiver, I'm not sure if the lighting is going to let me show you, but the receiver, I tried a couple of different options. Yeah, I don't think the lighting is going to be a friend. But basically, my receiver is on the bottom of the airplane underneath that battery. And I had to do that because when I put the battery in the battery compartment, I was way nose heavy. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. It's a 60 amp BSC in a, in a 32 class motor. That's what the book calls for. So I'm not sure why when I used a battery in that compartment that I was so nose heavy. But by putting the battery very close to the center of gravity, the thing balances perfect. So, and, and one other thing I'm going to point out, the book calls for a 3200 milliamp, this is a 2200 milliamp. So this is a full third smaller, and I had to push the battery back. And I, the good news is I have more room. If I want to go to a bigger battery, there is more room to go back there, but you're not using the battery compartment in the cowl. Not sure why, but that it is what it is. Now, regarding the power setup, I did mention I'm using a hobby, a value hobby GeForce 32. This motor has a max amperage limit of 50 amps. So on a four cell pack, I'm looking for somewhere around 800 watts. On a four pound airplane, that should give me somewhere around 200 watts per pound. And that's fine. And I'm using a 12.8 prop to start. I have a feeling this might be too big. We'll see, but I may have end up having to go down to like an 11.7. So right now, 12.8, I have a feeling I might wind up with an 11.7. We'll, we'll see. And then as far as the ESE goes, I'm using a Hobby Wing 60 amp. I did put in the FR Sky S6R stabilizer. And I got to tell you guys on those, it's a labor of love. It's a lot easier just to use a non-stabilized receiver. So it takes more work, but it's worth it because as I've mentioned in my previous videos, it these stabilizers expand your flight envelope. They give you more opportunities to fly when other people are just watching. That's it. That's the rundown. Oh, uh, servos are just standard 17 gram minis from Power Up. Oh, and that reminds me. Just because I normally do things like this, when I bought my servos from Power Up, I bought five instead of four. Just, just because. And I'm glad I did. Because I went to screw one of the little screws that hold the control horns in, and it was stripped. So um, the servo works great, but you can't screw a screw in to hold the servo horn down. So. I'm glad I bought the fifth servo. That's just a little kind of pro tip. If you're already buying them, and I mean, the, the servos were only four, four or five dollars. So, you know, what's one extra servo in the grand scheme? The good news for me is I was able to get my plane done. 
Okay, to close out, I mentioned I'll show you what happens when you screw a hole through your covering. I didn't have any white. I had no white covering, so I put a little black patch on there. And then on the back, the reason that tape is on there, long story short, when I put the empennage together, I forgot the darn torque rod. I already had the glue in, so I had to pull the wing out, put the torque rod in. Sorry, I had to pull the horizontal stabilizer out put the torque rod in, and then put the stabilizer back in. Totally my fault, but when I did that, I wound up getting some glue on the back, so I just decided I was gonna put a stripe on it, and I'm gonna call it an orientation stripe. So that's what it is. And that one is strictly there covering a hole, 100% my fault, and um, can't, blame, can't blame anyone but myself because I didn't read the book. And by the way, because you don't have a plate up top, make sure you take the screws out and fill the holes with thin CA, spray a little accelerator on there, and then put your screws back in. If you don't, you're gonna watch your control surfaces get cut loose from the control rod, and it'll just flop in the wind. Anyway, guys, that is the Ryan STA build review. I'm, I, I gotta give this plane super high marks. Everything came together really well. Uh, they gave you all the parts for a very nice aesthetic. The covering is spectacular fit and finish on the plane is excellent and i think for the amount of money they're asking for it if you get a couple coupons this is a pretty good deal pretty good deal of an airplane it's it's a it's a bigger plane 55 inch nice wingspan i expect it'll have very nice presence in the air and uh, it looks great man it's just a cool looking airplane i like it i am looking forward to getting the maiden done uh, and i will get a watt meter test for this plane soon so stay on the lookout for that and I hope the video has been helpful. And by the way, go get a Ryan STA. I don't see these things. I, I don't think they get any any of the love. It's a cool looking plane, man. Look at that thing. That's just that's just cool. So anyway, go get one. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you at the field.